All right, so now we've moved over to the iPad, and in the iPad, what we've done is we've previously downloaded the Race 6 application, and that's part of the setup process. And we've also uh, used the App Store to download the FileMaker Go application. The FileMaker Go application is free, and so you so right now we have FileMaker Go and Race 6 set up. You want to make sure that you've logged out of the Race 6 application before you import your Race package. So we previously mailed the Race package, so we'll go into Mail, and here's the Race package. And when you tap on the attachment, the first thing it'll do is it will download it. And once it's downloaded, you'll see the the icon that represents the FileMaker. You click on the icon, it'll give you a choice of where to execute it, and we'll pick FileMaker Go, and what it'll do is it will launch you into the application, and you need to type in your password, and you'll be given a login and password as part of your setup instructions, and you'll be put into the race package. You can see the race that we have that we've previously loaded and we just want to import it. And the iPad's chip is a little bit slower than uh, a desktop computer so it does take a little longer. But You can see that it, it has imported the one race and the 18 racers. Continue. And you can actually see here, here are the racers that were in the race package and now here are the racers for the what's in the, in the database. So we now can exit the race package and we can start up the main application. The main, main application, as I mentioned, is called Race 6. You will log into that. Oops, can't type. And now we're in the main application. Now what I've done here is I've already set the info level. You can bump through the info level as you can see and I've set the info level down to two so we don't get those irritating messages that may be helpful when you're first learning the system. Notice that I'm on the uh, on a different race so I have to go to select manage races and what I want to do is I will sort by race name so I can easily find it and I want to do a sample race so I've highlighted a sample race and I'll say that's the race we want to use. So I've selected that. You can see the race clock is set to zero. Uh, I now have my 18 racers in my sample race and so what we're first going to do is we're going to go in and start the race clock. Now before I do that, what I also want to show you is that I've also I've also done the same on my uh, iPhone. I previously clicked and loaded into the iPhone. So what we're going to do is we're going to normally what you'll be doing is you'd have all your volunteers get together and you'd start the race clock and then you try to synchronize between your devices. Now this won't get down to the absolute fraction of a second but what you can see is if we start the thing here and we start it here We're off a little bit, so I'll use the bump button to get it so we're... You can see we're not quite perfect, but we're, we're pretty much synchronized. Um, and then you, we also have the option if you want, you can use one of your iPads. You can play with the font size to make it bigger. You can use one of your iPads, or even if we also have the same thing on the iPhone, you can use one of them as the race clock if you wish. So. Now this, the start is at one minute, so we want to go over to the start function. And you can see it gives me a message about loading the array. It loads up an array of bib numbers for you the first time in. Once these are loaded, you're all set to go and we can start tracking. And you can see that the, the system will track for each person. We're on the first person, it says go for them. And it'll Go, it'll have that up for two seconds, it'll move to the next person. And you can see that it's, it essentially uh, will march through each person, telling them to go, and we'll go over later about how to set up starts, but it will track ghosts and the like, and it will let people um, 
you know, it'll tell you when the next person needs to start, and it'll, it'll march all the way through all of the uh, erasers. So now, let's assume that we're going to be taking splits. So the next thing we want to do is we'll bump the race clock up to simulate a split. We'll uh, bump it up to 20 minutes. We'll exit it. Uh, now what we're going to be doing is going to splits, and again we're going to get the same message about loading the array for the first time in. And if you're uh, worried about the time that it takes to set up, what you can do is notice once the array is loaded, if I back out and come back in, it's, it stays loaded. So this is just part of the initial setup. It will load the array. You can see it does 10 per line. On the iPhone, you have the same exact same process again. You go continue. It loads the array and you can see on the iPhone it does it five per line. But the basic function is exactly the same. So now as the people go by, um, first what I would like to show you is the the finish button function for when you touch the, the bid numbers has the function that's listed here under finish button, button action. And you can change the uh, finish button mode so it does different things. So if you want to adjust the time, that allows you to bump button the time on, and then you can hit the bid to take away or add a second. Um, you can turn on, uh, you can track a skier, which I'll explain in a minute, or you can record time. The default is to record time. So as people finish, what, what you'll do is you'll press on the bid, and you can see the people of interest are in different colors. Um, so we, we have 1, 4, 6, and 13 are people that we're tracking. And as I enter the people, what you'll see is it puts the leader and the person of interest leader, and we've only had one person of interest go by, and they also happen to be uh, the leader of the people who entered. And I'll do uh, Fred here, and I'll do Dan. And I'll do Amos. All right, so what this does is it shows you the person of interest leader, the fastest of the pe people at interest is Fred Jones, and the leader is Dan Wright. Now, what I also can do is you can notice I've got the race clock over here, and it's ticking over. And what I can do is I can start, I can track a skier. If I go track skier, it changes the function to track skier. And let's say what I'd like to do is I'd like to track Bill Smith. Now what that does is it's difficult to see here, but what I can do is I can get the same information by going to the uh, tracking clock. And what this shows is I'm tracking Bill Smith. He's at 20 minutes, one second, two seconds. He's 32 seconds up on Amos. And of the people of interest, he's a minute up. And you'll see that it sits here in green, and you can actually control these colors. I have it set to green when, when you're ahead. It's yellow from 0 to 30, and then it turns red if you're more than 30 seconds behind. But this way you can track this individual skier, and when he finally comes by, you can record the split. You can say, hey, you're 11 seconds up on Bill Smith, who's the leader, and you're 50 seconds up on Fred Jones, who is your teammate. Uh, your, so that gives you the ability, as I say, to track both the... Um, the overall leader that's split against the overall leader and the, and the person of interest leader. Now I can stop tracking and clear the clock and you can see I'm no longer tracking anybody and the clock continues to tick over. And I can continue to take splits. I just want to also show you if I'm tracking someone, tracking Henry here, uh, I also can continue to take splits of the other people. And you can see the latest split also does the colors. This is the latest split that you just took, and it shows time back. Oh, you can see the now the uh, thing's gone to yellow because he's no longer, the person I'm tracking is now behind, but he's less than 30 seconds behind. Uh, and if we let it go past 30, it'll go red. So that's, that's basically how the splits work. Now at any point during this process, what I can do is I can go to split summary, and what that will show me, and it, this is, you'll see, that we change the form factor depending on what function we're doing, so you, you'll have to turn it sideways here. Um, what this does is it allows me to see the, the leaders on the top and the people of interest on the bottom, and I can see how they um, stand up. These are my team members down here, and these are my overall leaders on the top. And if I want, I, I, I have the system set up so I can, when I create a PDF, it can automatically send it, so I can go create leader PDF, and what it did is it created the PDF, 
automatically put it in the email. I had a default email set, and that just sent the email out. So it, it, it's that quick in terms of sending an email to someone. You could be sending this to another coach. At the finish, they would then get all the splits, and they'd open up their their uh, email, and we can actually see that if we go jump into mail. Here are my splits, and it's downloading it, and this is what I just created. And it literally takes about three or four seconds to get that set up and, and forwarded. So we'll go back in. And now what we'll do is we'll go to the finish. And again, it's loading the array for the first time uh, that you've been into that particular function. And again, if you had 100 racers, that might take 30 seconds to load that array. So you'd want to go in and out of each function in, in advance so you wouldn't have to wait for it to load. Now, this assumes that you're really focusing on just recording the finish, so it's not going to try to give you all sorts of splits. It will give you the race leader here, so if I, oh, I accidentally hit Frank Post, so Frank Post is the leader, uh, Fred Jones is now the leader, Dan Wright is the leader, and you can see as I click through, so I can always tell who's who's winning. Uh, and then again, I have a similar function if I want to uh, go see the results. Again, the form factor is changed. And I have the same thing if I want to create a PDF. Um, everybody or just the finishers? I'll do just the finishers. It does the same thing. And I just sent the finish off to uh, whoever the default um, person was on the email. Um, and so I'm back continuing to record the finish. And we will update results. We'll exit. Uh, we'll go back and look at the results a little more closely. What it does for you is it, again, changes the form factor. Uh, but you can see that it does all the places, shows you the people of interest in color, the elapsed, the percent back. Um, it also does all of the category placings. And you can see by age group, most of these people are the first person in each age group. It shows where they live and the club and team. You can also categorize uh, things like well, I don't have the technique listed on this, I should have. Uh, format it's the type of start. And then when you're ready, if, if you want to export the results, um, you can uh, include everybody or the do not start, do not finish, and the like. Uh, I'll just do finishers. And this created a CSV file. Uh, this is the same thing as same logic as we had before. It's a comma delimited export file that's written a predefined message for you um, and it sends it off to whoever you want to send it. And a couple of other quick things while we're here. Um, when you're doing finish, the we have the same concept of the function of each of the buttons and I can toggle through the that function. So what I can do is, for example, um, if I know this person didn't finish, I can set to DNF, and that person will be listed as DNF. We can see some. I'm not going to go through all the different functions. I know this person didn't start, so I did DNS. And then this person was disqualified because they did something else. And again, if I go back out, actually I could have gone directly to the finish. When I go to the finish, oh, I'm sorry. When I go to the results, you'll see that it shows the DSQs, the DNSs, and the um, as well. Um, so this gives you a quick overview of what it looks like on the iPad and on the iPhone. Uh, we have all of the same functionality with a little bit less re real estate. I can do the tracking and, and all of that. You know, you'll get within half a second. You'll get exactly the same times on the iPhone.